shape because of the cold border and the absence of wood-eating organisms in the Antarctic seas. There's a picture here of Frank Wilde Shackleton's second in command. Alongside endurance after the ship was crushed by ice. Thanks to the work of Endurance's captain and navigator, Frank Wellesley, who with basic navigational tools was able to determine the ship's location around the time it sank. The expedition is confident the wreck is in a 7 mile by 14 mile zone in the Western Weddell. We know pretty much where we need to go, said John Shears, leader of Endurance 22, who is making his 25th expedition to Antarctica. And so far this season, it is the Antarctic summer. Satellite imagery shows the pack ice has not been too bad. We're very optimistic that we'll get over the wreck site with the ship, Mr. Shears said. But in a shift in winds or a sudden drop in temperature can change things in a hurry, as Shackleton learned the hard way. Should the ice make reaching the wreck site impossible, the expedition has an audacious plan B. It involves using two helicopters to dispatch equipment and technicians to a drifting ice flow where they will drill a three foot wide hole and launch the submersibles from there. Lars Rabenstein, the expedition's chief scientist and other sea ice experts on board would have to choose a flow that can safely support the crew and equipment. But there is another wrinkle, Dr. Rabenstein said, because it would take a few days to set up a camp on the flow. The task for him and others would be to choose one, so that two days later we are over the wreck site, said Dr. Rabenstein. And that's a most delicate question. A previous expedition three years ago ended in failure when an older technology submersible was lost before technicians could determine where they had located the wreck. The newer ones will be connected to the surface by a fibre optic cable that can deliver images and data in real time. Built in Norway of massive timbers powered by both steam and sail, Endurance was designed to withstand the extreme pressures of manoeuvring through pack ice. Shackleton set sail in late 1914 with a crew of 27 men bound for Basel Bay on the eastern side of the Weddell Sea. The plan was for Shackleton and a small party to journey across the vast Antarctic ice sheet to the South Pole, as Edmondson had been the first to do in 1911, but then keep going to the Ross Sea on the other side of the continent. site of a shipwreck is Antarctica, the Weddell Sea, Argentina and Chile, and where it was hoping to get to the Ross Sea. They never made it to the starting point. In early 1915, about 100 miles from the bay, 
endurance became stuck in the Weddell's drifting pack ice. Shackleton and his crew watched for months as the ship suffered from the pressure of the ice building up around it. The crew eventually decamped to the ice and emptied endurance of food and stores and almost everything else including three open lifeboats before it sank in November. The rest of the story is the stuff of legends. The following April, as the ice broke up, all 28 men sailed in the lifeboats to Elephant Island, little more than a rocky outcropping north of the Antarctic Peninsula. From there, Shackleton, Walsley and four others, enduring freezing weather and rough seas, sailed one of the 22-foot boats 800 miles to the nearest inhabited island of South Georgia. Yes. Nice. 
which has declined in seasonal extent over decades as the Earth has warmed. Sea ice extent around Antarctica has remained relatively constant. Dr. Arndt will be looking for signs that possible long-term changes are beginning. But she is also looking forward to the search for the endurance. This is a really huge thing, she said, and for me it's really special. The first book I read about Antarctica was one about Shackleton's expedition. This was for me the kickoff into polar science. most incredible story for a ship to be caught in ice in November, for men to live off the ice for six months, they say, the April was it, and then do an immense journey across the sea, or Shackleton did, and then an immense climb over mountainous areas, I think it was 800 miles, to then find help and then get back to the ice his crew were on and rescue them all. I mean, it is literally, as it says, an epic, epic tale of survival. As it's happening in the news at the moment, we wish them all the very best and look forward to their findings. Thank you so much for joining me. Please take good care of yourself and I'll see you again very soon.